Hello there and welcome to the Hash Power Academy. My name is Jake Scanlon. I'm the lead educator here at the Academy and this is a place for you to learn anything and everything to do with Bitcoin from its fundamentals of energy, computing and also the financial aspects of Bitcoin, its blockchain and the context of its dollarized price. We teach those components last, but the overall gist of this video is to fundamentally and 100% prove that Bitcoin is an energy currency. How and why? And what is the dynamics between these, well, these worlds, this physics uh, and finance? Well, we're going to look at the electron elasticity of Bitcoin, which if you are a physicist or an economist, you have your own understanding of the word elasticity. But guess what? Bitcoin is the circular integration of these two worlds of energy and finance with well, computing and cryptography in the middle. And this is the piece that actually defines uh, one side of the pricing system, the, the production side of how much uh, kilowatt hours you can purchase with one Bitcoin. Because in the early days, Satoshi Nakamoto didn't go into a platform and click buy and exchange dollars into Bitcoin, did he? In fact, every single Bitcoin has been produced through a quantity of kilowatts. Kilowatts to Bitcoin is the original exchange rate of Bitcoin. And as more hash rate joins the network, it raises the difficulty, it raises the electrical cost to produce the Bitcoin. And every halving comes along and cuts the rate in which the Bitcoin is distributed per energy cost. And so you've got this continual repricing over time of more energy chasing fewer sats, and that's its pricing system. If you're holding Bitcoin, it represents a greater quantity of energy to produce your purchasing power, so to speak. And so this video is going to absolutely fundamentally prove that Bitcoin is an energy currency. And what we're going to look at is, well, the difficulty right now is 121.51 trillion. That's the difficulty, the bar, the bar has been set and this constant I'll still explain it in another video, but that just boils down uh, and multiplies out the difficulty to what the current average two week looking back hash rate is for the whole network, which is 869 exahash. And when you multiply that again by 23, that converts the amount of exahash being produced at an average efficiency of 23 joules per terahash into 20,000 megawatts. Now, if you add an hour to that, that's obviously 20 million, boil it down again, kilowatt hours. And if we look at the 144 blocks per day of 450 Bitcoin in total for the whole day, that approximates six blocks at 18.75. This is because subsidy right now is 3.125 Bitcoin per block multiplied by six, and you get your 18.75. Now, for easy numbers, we are going to keep it in dollars, but the most key thing as well to take away from this video is we can remove the dollar. This is going to be the second commodity on a Bitcoin unit of account. The first commodity is Bitcoin per virtual byte. The very use of sending Bitcoin and paying a fee to store that information, data, in a block. That is the first Bitcoin unit of account component of the network. Take a breath. The second component is that exchange rate to electricity. How and why? Well, because Bitcoin is mathematically connected to electricity because the miners are consuming a quantity of electricity, their energy bill, which has a dollarized price, and they run it through a computer to produce hash rate and capture some of this Bitcoin. And so their output quantity of Bitcoin is still mathematically connected in that chain. And that has a dollarized price. So yes, right now we're managing all these things in a world of dollar premiums, but we can strip the dollar away from both components and have a quantity of energy traded to a quantity of Bitcoin. And the takeaway for this video, looking at the el elasticity is, well, how does that price change? Because right now we can do the 1.5 million Bitcoin being earned per hour by the network and the 20 million kilowatt hours being consumed. So this is the input cost and this is the output revenue rate of an hour. And if we divide 1.5 million divided by 20 million, you get 0 0.075. So 7.5 cent of Bitcoin per kilowatt hour. So if a, if a miner was mining at the large industrial scale and he was consuming energy to earn 7.5 cent a kilowatt hour, if the price on the grid went to 10 cents, 
Why, why would he mind? Why would he consume the power if he has the ability to demand response and sell the power back to the grid? And so that pricing system is, is already halfway there, where the miners are halfway there in Bitcoin, Bitcoin's second unit of account commodity of electricity. But what we're going to show you here is, so I've just shown you the, the, the current rate of the amount of Bitcoin earned per kilowatt hour. What would happen if 10% more hash rate comes online? What do you think would happen? So we're going to do plus 10%. And that would obviously add an extra 20, uh, sorry, an extra 2 million kilowatt hours at this current revenue rate. Just keep scribbling these out and writing them back in. What do you think would happen? So the amount of Bitcoin being earned by the entire network um, would get diminished on the producer side. But what happens to the consumer side, those holding Bitcoin, that now your Bitcoin essentially represents an even greater quantity of energy to be exchanged at that rate. But it's not that rate anymore. Let's in fact take the scenario that yes, 10% more hash rate has come online. Well, this price would be, if I have it written down, 10% more hash rate. So there's 20, that'll be dividing the 1.5 million divided by 22 million. That's a smaller number, which is, where is it? 0 0.068. 0 0.068. So more hash rate chasing the fewer Bitcoin, which means more energy chasing that fewer Bitcoin which means the rate, the 0 0.068, means that the, 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 the amount of Bitcoin that an individual miner is earning per kilowatt hour has dropped, which means that the price that the miner is willing to sell on the grid has dropped. So let me just, uh, just shatter that theory that Bitcoin is going to take over the world and consume all energy. No, because the more hash rate that comes online, it makes the energy cheaper for the miners to sell and they want to sell the energy because if the miner switches off even a portion of the machine's energy use, underclocking the machine, it lowers the joules per terahash, which is increasing the efficiency, which reprices his exchange rate for his remaining hash rate online, which is to say that Bitcoin has a dynamic, elastic pricing system to electricity and the miner will make more money by selling the power. So his his computer justifies the capacity to be able to buy power in a contract because he can, he has the ability to use the power to export it onto the internet. But he will make more money by selling it back to the grid. And so, yeah, if more hash rate comes online, more miners plugging in using more of the world's energy, it makes the price of energy for consumers cheaper, more abundant, shall we say. And let's do it the other way around. What happens if 10% of the network comes offline? Let's say 10% uh, of the network, we're, we're in this future world of Bitcoin's unit of account economics. Everyone's living in citadels and consuming power and sharing that power to each other based on their consumption of mining and that available energy on their local citadel grid. Well, if 10% uh, of that energy was sold because it's consumed in the households, and 10% of the hash rate came offline um, in a two week average, what do you think the price of energy does then? So the, the system, the, the planetary system is being priced as less energy chasing fewer sats. Well, what this does is it raises the price to buy the energy. So there's less of a supply of energy available to buy in the system because hash rate is essentially a representation of energy that's available to be purchased. This is what I'm trying to get at here. Bitcoin as an energy currency. Zero, eight, three. When I first figured this out as a concept, goosebumps blew my mind. But yeah, so when more hash rate comes online, the price of energy for you to have to pay for that energy from miners in our citadel grids of the future gets cheaper. More supply of energy in the system more hash rate means more energy supply versus that, that amount of uh, pr the price. The pricing system on the consumption side is the amount of subsidy and fees per block. Because that's what the miner is comparing. He's comparing how much can I earn by exporting the energy to the internet 
to earn the Bitcoin, consuming it? How much can I earn selling it locally? So the, the, the global price for energy is what Bitcoin sets through block rewards. And this defines a price, a price that a local person is willing to sell power in abundance. And so, yeah, we've got this uh, minus 10%. So 10% of the network hash rate has switched off. It raises the price for energy for you. And so you've got this elasticity of an energy price of Bitcoin, which is not static, it's dynamic. And it's dynamic to how much energy is available in the system represented as network hash rate. Because hash rate is just a, a projection of the energy available in the system. Let's do um, the final one of saying, well, what happens if uh, loads of fees rush into the uh, consumption side? People, let's just say it doubles. If uh, the amount of, if the amount of, um, uh, which number should we use? Six to eight. Let's just say that this uh, doubles. This one doubles. So it's thirty-seven point five Bitcoin. So in an hour, miners think they have the potential to earn thirty-seven point five Bitcoin, which equals three million. So now we do the 3 million divided by, which one should we do? Yeah, 3 million divided by the 22 million kilowatt hours. We've just dollarized to keep it easy. How much do you think, um, how much do you think the, the kilowatt hour exchange rate will be? If more consumption is in the network, miners are recognizing that they can earn more or double. So it's essentially double this price. Because um, I've this figure, I'm going to use it to this one in my numbers, which is yeah, double literally. If if uh, I'll keep it simple, whatever the hash rate is, whatever the energy is underneath that, if the block rewards were to double, the energy price doubles, which basically means you've got this interplay between block rewards defining the 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 global price for energy and the miners local efficiency setting that, that exchange rate price based on that global price. So the two key components of this are the miners local efficiency and the global price. And I see places like um, Indonesia, anywhere that they have um, location based limitations that I'm sure all the different thousands of islands, they have some form of ability to produce power that now there is the potential that if if there was mining machines on all the little islands consuming energy available on the particular islands, it doesn't make any sense to run power lines between all the islands. But if they all consume energy at a global rate, they have a global, they have a global wireless defined price for energy, but it's all uh, available at the local level. And this is the other thing about Bitcoin mining is this computer that has a global price of energy defined and a justified consumer, which justifies the build out of more production. Because you've got this chicken and egg issue. It's like uh, anywhere that you want to build out more energy production, uh, well, you need a consumer. If you, want, if you want to spend the millions to build out energy production, you need something that consumes the energy, a buyer. One's, one, <laughs> this enterprise costs a lot of money, produces a lot of energy, this one, well, still costs us a lot of money, but converts energy into money. And so you've got this, this duopoly of the energy production side where if you want to build out more civilizational infrastructure in your country, it has the ability to have two options of to export that energy locally or globally. And all of these pieces create this amazing future where, well, the more hash rate comes online, the more uh, purchasing power your Bitcoin has. And that this is this is beyond the dollar world, because, as I said at the start, that these are mathematically connected. So one of the struggles with trying to understand how we price things in Bitcoin, if if a quantity of Bitcoin is already accounted through mathematics and physics and cryptography to a quantity of electricity, the pricing system is already naturally there. And what this does is, well, now you've got, say, electricity priced in Bitcoin. 
Well, now you can delve into accounting carbon credits on a Bitcoin unit of account. You could price oil on a Bitcoin unit of account. You could price any other derivation of um, producing energy because there's multiple different layers that you can un put underneath electricity and other technology components to produce it. I think I'm going to stop there. It's probably a bit of a weird and wonderful topic, but yeah, Bitcoin is an elastic price of energy based on how much hash rate is online because hash rate online being produced by the proof of producing blocks uh, and the difficulty adjustment. The difficulty adjustment essentially represents the purchasing power of your Bitcoin. When difficulty is going up, your, your Bitcoin is gaining more kilowatt hour purchasing power but you've also got the component of the efficiency of machines is continually um, in decline in the sense that these machines are gaining, gaining efficiency by consuming less energy to produce more compute. So um, Moore's law is not working against you, but um, essentially the microchips are continually getting more efficient, but they are, they're also hitting chip density limits. And... Uh, uh, that's going to be an interesting thing in the future. But overall, yeah, less and less Bitcoin every four years, but more and more energy. So the in a, in a couple hundred years, <laughs> one Bitcoin will essentially, well, even to now, I, I theorize that one Bitcoin has the purchasing power of 10,000 years of a single human's consumption of energy. So yes, you could essentially retire your bloodline and there is a way to actually mathematically define what that represents. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy this video. Share it to anyone you think uh, would find this of interest. Um, I'm, added, I'm going to add it to this sheet that I will be sharing on the channel. I hope to see you in the next one. Like, subscribe and I'll see you. Goodbye.